Good morning, Maria. Good morning. How nice to see you here. Today we're going to start our virtual buyer's caravan. Good morning, Javier. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be here with you and all the buyers. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for all of you that are worldwide joining us today for this fantastic trip that you're going to take through Colombia. But I, I don't want to take much of your time yet, and please let us know that we are keeping our distance, social distance, so everything is okay, fantastic. Thank you for joining us today in this trip for you to go through all these uh, Valle del Cauca and Cauca regions where you will see and, and, and listen uh, and taste our coffee. Up to now you can be listening to the Colombian music just for you to get in, in warmth. But uh, let me just pass this thing to Mr. Lawrence Sachs. Lawrence Sachs is the mission director of USAID in Colombia and uh, he wants to uh, welcome you today to this trip. You know that this is a trip and this is a bus. So let's hop on the bus. Mr. Lawrence, Larry, please, uh, we with us right now. Uh, muy buenos días a todos. Uh, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks to everybody who's here for taking the time to join us today. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Larry Sachs, and I'm the mission, USA Mission Director here in Colombia. But what you need to know most about me is that I've long been a coffee lover. In fact, I can't function without multiple cups a day. So you can imagine how thrilled I was a few years back to be assigned to Colombia. But beyond keeping me awake at the office, coffee is crucial for the entire country and the more than half a million Colombians who work in the coffee sector, including those in Cauca and Valle de Cauca, who we're supporting through this virtual coffee buyers caravan. Coffee is the unique blend that brings hope and opportunity to countless Colombians who have faced unimaginable violence during decades of armed conflict. It ignites the economy and it, help us, and it helps to usher in a culture of legality in much of rural Colombia. And so coffee, in Colombia is not to be taken lightly, or in my opinion, with cream or sugar. But in all sincerity, uh, I hope that everybody is staying healthy and safe uh, during these very challenging, uncertain times. And it's my honor and my privilege uh, to recognize Roberto Velez Vallejo, the general manager of the National Federation of Coffee Growers of Colombia, Gerardo Montenegro, the executive director of the Cauca Coffee Growers Committee, Juan Carlos Wampe, manager of Sencoic, Hector Velasco, manager of Capi Norte, Gustavo Vasquez, uh, director of Capi Occidente, and of course the inspirational coffee growers in the departments of Cauca and Valle del Cauca, and all the buyers from across the, glo the globe who have joined us today. Coffee grown in Colombia has distinguished itself for its world-renowned quality, its rich flavor, its robust variety, and its linkage to Colombian culture and Colombian history. And with the massive increase in global demand for specialty coffees, more than 25% of rural coffee growing families in Colombia today are dedicated to growing and processing premium varieties with more than 13 million bags sold annually around the world. But equally as important, Colombia also recognizes that consumers aren't just looking for premium quality coffee. Increasingly, they prefer to purchase coffee that is produced under environmentally sustainable and socially responsible business models. And while this has created some challenges in other producing countries, I'm thrilled that, that Colombia has really stepped forward and demonstrated global, le global leadership in this regard under the National Federation of Coffee Growers of Colombia. And that's why uh, USAID, in particular through our Producers to Market Alliance program, has joined forces with Fede Cafe to launch a commercial strategy that we refer to as Coffee for Peace in Colombia. Our broad objective is to help Colombia transition from over 50 years of violent conflict to an inclusive and a durable peace. And coffee is central to that effort. Together with Fede Cafe, we're working in six Colombian states to increase access to specialty markets and promote relationships between importers, roasters, and buyers to generate new alliances and commercial chains that are built on our shared values and our joint commitment to sustainability. So fast forward to today's new and uncertain normal, and we all recognize that COVID-19 has brought an entirely new set of challenges to Colombia, including in the coffee sector. And that's why we've worked expeditiously on innovative new approaches that allow our progress to continue during these unprecedented times. In fact, our quest to be more agile and to adapt actually led to this very activity, the first virtual buyer's caravan in Cauca and Valle del Cauca, 
to ensure that rural Colombian producers continue to receive premium prices for their coffee and empower them to create licit economic opportunities for countless Colombian families. We're extremely proud of this initiative, and I think you will be too. And I would like to once again welcome all of our participants to this virtual space of specialty coffees. I am fully convinced that over the next couple of days, you will all have an opportunity to learn more about what makes Colombian coffee so special and to get to taste some of the very best that Cauca and Valle de Cauca have to offer. I'm also convinced that these are some of the best coffees that you will ever taste. And they're the only ones in the world that taste like peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for your words. I think that uh, Larry explains everything what we are going to do in this trip. This is a really, a, a, it's an, a new way of promoting and selling coffee and to bring together you uh, buyers, importers and roasters to our producers and to our regions. But uh, not wanting to waste too, too much time, I will also pass the, the, the microphones and the cameras to Mr. Roberto Vélez. Mr. Roberto Vélez, as Larry mentioned, he is the general manager of Federación Nacional de Cafeteros. And please, Roberto, uh, we're waiting also for your, for your words. Thank you very much always for being supportive to these initiatives. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for all of you. Thank you for being with us today. Well, Larry, you did it ma magnificent. You have become a proper ambassador for Colombian coffee. I, I, I don't have too much to say, but uh, thanking USAD and Pintrack for uh, for this initiative. And again, uh, welcoming all of you uh, to Colombia, to what Colombia is. This is a wonderful initiative. Um, this is really being innovative. Um, now we are in, the, in a very difficult times of COVID-19, so we have to be creative. And this is a very good example of a group creativity to bring uh, customers, importers, uh, grocers, buyers of Colombian coffee to, to have a glaze of what Colombian coffee industry is like, what Colombian coffee cafeteros is like, what our Colombian coffee uh, uh, growers association is like, and, um, and ultimately, of course, to have the opportunity to taste the, what Colombian coffee has to bring on the specialty side. I think we, we have always known Colombia as a good quality origin, but very few people can understand the differences between Colombian coffees inside Colombia. I always say that there's no such a thing as Colombia coffee. There's a, a bunch of Colombian coffees, and all of them are good for a specific coffee profile that you are looking into. I always refer to this small example. Latitude plays an, an enormous role on giving a coffee the different characteristics. And if you take the latitude between Chiapas in Mexico all the way to Panama, we are talking of eight degrees difference in latitude. If you go all the way up to the Sierra Nevada in Colombia, down to Nariño, you have 10 degrees. That shows the palette of tastes that you can find here in Colombia, plus the amazing work that uh, the cafeteros do to provide a perfect club for all of you. This caravan is uh, uh, something that is amazing, uh, amazingly well planned. You will have the opportunity to meet the communities. You will have the opportunities to see what it's like to be in a, in a coffee growing area, in a, in a coffee plantation. I'm sure that most of you have been in a coffee growing farm, but you will have the opportunity to travel all through these regions, Valle del Cauca and Cauca, that are so beautiful, that are so nice. And on top of that, you will have the but I would say the privilege to cup and to taste all these beautiful coffees. All of this is follows an initiative supported by USAD from a long time to just to give the opportunity to the coffee growers and the coffee growing areas to maintain the peace 
and and uh, to keep working on what is ours, what is our heritage copy. So once again, thank you for all of you, all the organizers, and of course, this is not it, this would not be possible if we didn't have the buyers on the other side. So this is a magnificent uh, join of forces together to show how the coffee chain works and, and provides the uh, means for the whole chain to work from the tree to the cup. Welcome again. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Roberto. Thank you very much. Definitely, uh, between Larry and yourself, you really explain what are we building here. It's a new way to promote and a new way to sell coffees. But, but I would like to, 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 to also to thank USAID and their team because they have been really helpful. And I would like to, to name and maybe show you some faces of the team of USAID that is uh, coming uh, to this meeting also. Uh, with us in, a, in the studios and in the cameras in the Zoom, we have uh, the deputy director, Marta Ponte, that I don't know if, I, if, if we can if say hello to her. We also have uh, with us a, from USAID, Natalie de Renault, that she is an alliance expert in PPP. Uh, uh, Natalie, you don't have a, a camera on. I don't know, I, but I see you. And I also want to say hello to Miguel Atuesta. He is a, the of, official of contracts in USAID. Uh, Nate Bills, uh, as a official in development in the Office of Rural and Economic Development. And not the last and not least, Fernando Gomez from uh, the Office of Rural Development. And, uh, okay, but now going to you, buyers, and I, I have a surprise. I think we, we have seen all this weekend and these days, uh, Maria, that this current is, 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 a, is news, it's a very important news. So uh, we would like to tell you, guys, you 32 buyers that are coming here to Colombia, that you have been in the news since last week. I mean, everybody is excited to have you here. So I will ask our uh, technicals to please show you the, the type of news that we are having from you in, in, in the Colombians. Uh, biggest rate, I will say the premium rate news You've been in, in, the, in, in the business in the news forever. Dos. Lanzan una nueva forma de vender el café de nuestro país en el exterior. La visita personal a los compradores de café en el exterior queda atrás. Por primera vez se adelantará una caravana virtual para compradores de café colombiano en Rumania, Australia, Inglaterra, Taiwán, Dinamarca. Corea del Sur y los Países Bajos. Cada comprador recibirá en su domicilio una muestra del mejor café producido en Cauca y Valle del Cauca. Virtualmente se conectará con las fincas donde se cultiva el grano para conocer su producción y preparación. La Federación Nacional de Cafeteros y la Agencia de los Estados Unidos para el Desarrollo Internacional, USAID, están al frente. See, guys, you are news here in Colombia. Exactly. Everybody is excited. Yes, we are very, very happy to start at the end uh, this amazing week that we're going to share with you, the buyers, and also the organizations. Uh, thank you, Javier, for the introduction. I know it's going to be a great day. Please feel very comfortable in this meeting. The idea is to feel that we are in the farms, feel that we are in Colombia, and at the end, sharing our expectations, and at the end, uh, talking about quality that is what gathers us today. Fantastic. So I think that it's time to get uh, on the bus. Uh, so please be seated, relax. And then <laughs> as when you are in a bus, you will always have somebody to keep on telling you what, it, what are you seeing? What do you want to see? So I want to introduce to you also uh, William Booth. William Booth is uh, the CEO of Coffee, uh, Boot Coffee Company, that he's been working with the program, uh, PMM, that is Producers to Market Alliances, 
And he, with his team, we will be working, we've been working a lot in post-harvest commercialization, trading. So please, uh, William, join us. And from here on, you and Maria will handle all these technical uh, aspects and we will be watching you and, and, and going with you in the same bus. But we will, uh, at least myself, I will stay quiet. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Hello, Maria. Hello, audience. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Roberto and all friends who participate in this first ever caravan. I specifically want to salute my colleagues. We all work as uh, consultants in the um, Producers to Markets Alliance program, the USAID program. And I want to um, salute my team, David, Jaime, Casey O'Keefe, Brianna, Carl, uh, but also Dennis, Javier, Alejandra, Mariana, and many that I forgot. Um, specifically also our ally from Traboca, uh, Sean and Tim, and specifically Craft Coffee, Maria and her team. Um, you've all done amazing work. And next, we are going to have a, a video showing and introducing Kauka, the Kauka Coffee Growers Committee counts more than 90,000 coffee farming families, 93,000 of hectares. It's the fourth producer of coffee in Thank Colombia. Thank you, Willem. So, I, I want to make a very quick uh, presentation of myself. Um, I don't Great. Know who, so my name is Maria Alejandra Olano. I work for the Colombian Coffee Growers Federation, specifically in the craft coffee team. The craft coffee team is in charge of trading the best coffees of Colombia and at the end finding excellent clients such as you. Uh, so I want to present the team that is behind um, everything that we have been organized. Um, we are four team members. Uh, we all work in the uh, commercial area and now we're going to see the faces of these three amazing guys that are part of our team. But how, Maria, tell me, how is it uh, that you have been working with, with all these samples and can you start explaining something just before he, they come in? Exactly. This seems that has been a very easy job, but I have to tell you that we have been working in this for more than six months. Uh, finding the organizations, really defining which coffees we want to present and to send you. Uh, we have sent the samples to all of you, the clients, that you have a, been able to cup and evaluate in your labs. I'm missing a voucher, uh, so wait, we are four of us. Yeah, okay, we have Juan Sebastian and we have... Uh... So we're going to send through the WhatsApp group in which all the buyers are, uh, the contacts for us for, so you can reach anyone if you have any question regarding Colombia, regarding co coffees, and so on. So there's Bauter as well. <laughs> Great. So now, Willem, uh, we can start with the video of the Cauca Committee if you want. Great. It's wonderful to see your colleagues there in you're all doing a great, great job. And so, as I already announced, we have a, a video, one of a series, and the, this first video will come up now and it will allow you to learn more about the committee of uh, Kauka. Bienvenidos al Cauca, departamento cafetero ubicado al sur occidente de Colombia, donde más de 90 mil familias de caficultores, entre campesinos, indígenas y afrodescendientes, cultivan un café de sabor y aroma único, el café de origen Cauca. La Federación Nacional de Cafeteros es una organización creada hace 93 años cuya misión es procurar el bienestar del caficultor y su familia a través de una organización democrática y representativa a través de la provisión de bienes y servicios públicos. 
en el departamento del Cauca hoy se cultivan 93 mil hectáreas del café con una producción de 1.500.000 sacos de café bajo estrictos estándares de calidad y de trazabilidad para el mercado internacional. En los caficultores del departamento nos hacen llegar las muestras de café a través del servicio de extensión. Estas muestras se les realiza un análisis físico y sensorial determinando qué defectos físicos, qué problemas en tasa y qué atributos tiene este café para luego socializar los resultados Perdón, con los no, caficultores no te, y haya un mejoramiento continuo de la calidad. Una de las estrategias para dar a conocer este territorio cafetero del país y es la realización de ferias eh, de café de especialidad en donde se han cita eh, los caficultores con sus mejores lotes de café pero también invitamos clientes internacionales para que conozcan las diferentes calidades que producimos acá en el departamento. Una estrategia fundamental de posicionamiento del origen, del origen cauca de, de todos los cafés que tenemos a lo largo de ancho del departamento. café no es de, un, de una sola característica, acá tenemos cafés distintos como somos biodiversos, eh, digamos que socialmente, también tenemos una diversidad en términos eh, de calidades de café. La cooperativa es la entidad que brinda la garantía de compra a todos los caficultores, contando con 36 puntos de compra a lo largo del departamento del Cauca. La cooperativa brinda a todos sus caficultores la posibilidad de una agencia cercana a su punto, a su vivienda, el precio justo, también le brinda la oportunidad de vender su café eh, como micro lotes como un café diferenciado, creemos que eso es lo que está buscando el mercado y en ese sentido la cooperativa viene diseñando un programa muy importante que permitirá que todos nuestros asociados y caficultores en general puedan recibir un mejor precio por el, la labor realizada en beneficio de su café. Generar protocolos de calidad a la medida de cada uno de los productores que atienda, de mejorar puntuación en tasa y de mantener la consistencia durante el tiempo de estos productores de cafés especiales. Tiene proyectos eh, de desarrollo rural inclusivo en donde atendemos 1.600 familias fortaleciendo la cadena productiva del café. Tenemos programas de mujeres rurales, vamos a tener una segunda fase. Estamos empezando un nuevo proyecto de jóvenes indígenas con una comunidad masa en donde queremos eh, fortalecer el relevo generacional y motivarlos para que ellos continúen con esta labor de producir café desde la óptica ya de la comercialización y la transformación del producto. Es por esto que los invito a que nos acompañen en este viaje virtual por la geografía, por la cultura y los perfiles del café del Cauca y que ustedes a través de su relacionamiento comercial contribuyan a construir una caficultura socialmente justa, culturalmente aceptable, ecológicamente sustentable y económicamente rentable. So this is the beginning. Now you are moving around by, uh, the, the depart Department of Cauca. And I hope that you are well seated, you are relaxed. Uh, I hope that you have liked the Colombian music that I am missing right now. But I would love to have always this Colombian music because they will, they will give you the sense of being in, in the tropic, to being in Colombia. The Colombia is known for coffee and, and for the music, right? So I will ask you buyers, importers and roasters to open up your cameras because we want to say hello to you and we want you to say hello to us. 
So I'll pass that on to Maria because Maria is going to do the presentation of Future Pew. Thank you, Javier. Yes, I agree. The idea is to make it as relaxed or as comfortable as we can. So the idea is to present yourself as if we were in the coffee region uh, all together. So um, I want to start today with uh, Jeff Watts. I see him here. Maybe Jeff, you can turn on your microphone uh, and just in 10, 15 seconds, tell who you are and where are you from and uh, quick summary of your life. Uh, a quick summary of my life, is that what you said? <laughs> in 15 <laughs> seconds. In 10 seconds. Uh, my, name, my name is Jeff Watts. I'm um, uh, one of the owners of Intelligentsia Coffee in the United States. I'm a, I'm a cupper and a roaster and a barista and a coffee lover. And I'm uh, based in Chicago, but I'm currently living here in, in Bogota, enjoying a, a nice almohabana. <laughs> Good to see you all. Delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So nice. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Now I want to invite Sara Regis, that is also a very, very uh, close friend. Uh, maybe Sara can present you. You can present yourself, please. Yes, here I am. I'm in the coffee shop right now, and it might be a little busy, and not sure if you guys can hear me, but um, I'm Sara, and hi, Maria. So nice, nice to, to see you. Nice to see you. Yes. <laughs> um, I miss not going to Colombia, but this is great so far. And I own a coffee shop in Los Angeles. And I think I was on the first coffee buying trip with uh, Coffee for Peace in USAID, which was really neat. Um, and I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to find some more good coffees to bring home. Great. Thank you, okay. Sara. So nice to see you as well. Uh, this time, not in Colombia, but I feel with you here having in this in this caravan. Now, I want to invite uh, Timothy Volkema. If you can uh, present yourself, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be joining the virtual buyers caravan. I think this is a really innovative format. Um, I, I, I'm a little newer to the coffee industry, about three and a half years and got introduced to David Poole early on and have been working with Coffee for Peace for probably maybe almost a year and a half, two years now, and it's been a great experience. So, and then recently launched um, a, a brand called Hoven, specifically highlighting the work of younger farmers and worked with Cafe Norte on that. And so, um, yeah, happy to be here. Um, thanks for having me. Thank you, Timothy. Yes, um, with you, we have a very nice project of young coffee, young coffee producers that we are happy to continue for the next uh, years. I want to invite uh, Brandon Briggs, Riggs to present himself and, and your friend. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Brandon, uh, and I am a, one of the owners of Rising Star Coffee Roasters in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, this is Toby Reef. He is my head roaster, and he and I are doing this project together. So we're very excited to be here. Um, we have cupped some really amazing coffees, and we're looking forward to talking about them with them. So thank you. Thank you, Brandon. So nice to, to meet you. I want to invite now uh, Afshin Roshanian from Romania, a very, very close friend as well, to present himself. Ashen, good to see you. So nice to see you, Ashen. We're not hearing you. Maybe you're muted. It's possible. Okay. Better that way. <laughs> there is a mistake there. It's Ashen Roshanian from Romania. Ashen. The name is not yeah, correct. Nice to, it's correct. Nice to see everybody. Uh, really interesting way to buy coffee never bought coffee like this before <laughs> uh, but i never i never bought coffee like the last year either last time either so <laughs> um yeah we're based in romania um, we run artisan green bean it's a uh, part of our company that's dealing with doing green coffee since uh, last year uh, we bought some really 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 great coffees uh, just before COVID hit in colombia and uh, yeah, we're, we're looking to, I just got my coffee this morning, so I'll be cupping them tomorrow morning. And we're looking to see what's, yeah. we had some really amazing coffees last time. 
and uh, we're looking we're looking forward to more great coffees. Thank you, Afshin. Thank you, Afshin. So nice to see you again. Uh, now I want to introduce right. Alex Medina from Junto Coffee. Maybe Hello? Alex is not okay. Buenas, ¿cómo está? Okay. Okay, Alex, if you can turn on your camera, please. Uh, <laughs> or maybe we can continue with it. Okay. Sí, okay, perfecto. there you are. Hola, Alex, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Very excited. Very cool. Now, we all enjoyed the coffees a lot, so we're excited to be a part of this. Great. So nice. Thank you, Alex. Ashley of Willem course. from Ceremony, Ceremony Coffee, we want to, to know about you, please. Ashley, Ashley, we don't have her, so... Okay, then let's go with Baron Boot. Mr. Baron Boot, nice to see you again. Uh, we think that he's not in camera, so let's then go Then Emily with Bean. Is here? Hi. Hi, Emily. Hi. Um, yeah, so I'm Emily. I'm a roaster for Brio Coffee Works in Vermont. Uh, I've only been roasting for about a year. So, kind of a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So nice, Emily. Thank you. So, now I want to introduce... Um, not so many people have the camera on, so I don't know if someone vo voluntarily wants to present himself. Or we can continue with the rest of the agenda. I, I think we, we will make a break, like uh, move into a more uh, sit comfortable. The bus is, is running and is going to continue to the next uh, video that we have for you. Please do understand that we are using videos just for the sake of not uh, depending on improvise, I mean something that cannot be uh, seen. That's why we will do that. But do not worry that you will be online all day with the organizations and with the producers. So let's hop on the other video. William, I don't know if you want to make a short introduction of the video. Yeah. So we have a a beautiful video that kind of shows how life and coffee is intertwined with each other in Cauca. And it's very, very beautiful. I've seen it once and I, I, thought, I thought it was really beautiful. And I think after that video, we will introduce um, Gerardo, correct? Gerardo Montenegro. Okay, so we should continue with the video. El café en mi vida significa una pasión, pasión de ver crecer, pasión de, de disfrutárselo a, a cuando uno lo tiene en una taza, pasión de compartir, comparto con, con mis colaboradores, comparto con mi familia, comparto con mis amigos, comparto en las, eh, aquí en la región con, con la gente de aquí de la vereda. La cafecultura aquí en mi municipio es el primer renglón económico que hay, ¿cierto? De aquí, de, después del café, pues nos beneficiamos todos, ¿cierto? Después de su venta de café se beneficia el carnicero, se beneficia el comercio. La gente comprometida con la calidad, yo creo que, y también muchas instituciones apostándole a la cafecultura, eso hace que nuestra cafecultura eh, sea más competitiva y también sea distinta eh, al resto del país. Tenemos la calidad, el café acá que producimos casi todo es especial y también estamos apostándole a iniciativas sostenibles. Hemos avanzado en la cafecultura en el departamento, ya hay más familias cafeteras. Primero porque le estamos colocando como más empeño. Segundo porque nos estamos dando a conocer con café de calidad al resto del mundo. Y es que tenemos una oferta ambiental apropiada para el cultivo del café. 
en donde tenemos buenos suelos, en donde tenemos, digamos que, las variedades, en donde tenemos el clima, los regímenes de lluvia, todo eso contribuye a que nuestro café sea de excelente calidad. El departamento del Cauca es una región muy, pero muy bonita. Está todo por explotar, todo por explorar. Vivimos de, de la parte en agropecuaria. Aquí van a encontrar bueno, su producto bandera, que es el café. Encuentran ganado, encuentran los hermosos paisajes, encuentran muchas aves para ver. Hay un turismo casi sin explotar, pero está todo por ver. Yo creo que eh, nuestra caficultura es distinta a los demás. En primer lugar, por eh, la gente que produce el café. Somos eh, biodiversos, tenemos la cultura campesina, indígenas, afros. Yo creo que aquí hacemos las cosas porque nos gusta, porque nos nace, ¿cierto? Además de que, de que nos refleja unos ingresos, es porque llevamos esa pasión en la sangre. Se ha ido inculcando o se ha ido adoptando que producir café de excelente calidad sí paga, porque esa es una opción para el caficultor de, de negocio, no depender solamente de la bolsa de Nueva York, sino buscar otros mercados, atraer de enamorarlos o enamorar a los clientes con la calidad. ¿Qué más ha cambiado? Pues que a raíz de la caficultura también la gente se ha podido educar, ya hay mucha más gente que, que va a las escuelas, incluso a las universidades, entonces es muy importante en que la gente se esté preparando. Y se espera que en algún momento todo ese conocimiento que la gente está adquiriendo por fuera vuelva y lo retribuya en su región, que sería lo más importante para estas zonas cafeteras. Digamos que las políticas y su vivencia y el tema económico, pues... Uno de los principales factores que generan empleo es el café y yo creo que a nivel de las comunidades y la gente que, que ha empezado a trabajar con café han visto que, que en el café hay futuro. Y detrás de, ese, de esa taza de café hay una cantidad de esfuerzo, una cantidad de trabajo, una cantidad de historias, unas buenas, otras no tan buenas. pero sí es una buena herramienta para, para transformar la sociedad en que vivimos. I hope that you're enjoying your trip. I think Very. things are good. And I will ask again some of the buyers to please open their cameras. Maybe Hamid, Jamali, could you open up? Meanwhile, we will introduce some of the buyers. Exactly. I see here Cody Gallagher that has the camera on. Maybe we can hear you. Hello. Hi, I'm Cody Gallagher. I work for Sparrows Coffee, and I'm in Grand Rapids with Tim Volkema. And um, I was also on the first um, Coffee for Peace trip along with Sarah, so it's good to see some familiar faces again. I wish I was there with you guys right now. And yeah, tasting the spread of coffee is super fun. Kind of made me feel like I was in Cauca again. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to be a part of this. Great, Cody. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes, you were able to come physically to Colombia one year ago to buy the same coffees. I want to invite now um, sure. Hami Jamali from Saudi Arabia. Hi, everyone. You're hey. driving. Fantastic. <laughs> Good. This is, this, is, this is what we want, is to use technology for you to visit our country and we see you and talk to you. Thank you. And now I want Thank to Thank you very much. Uh, for, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, please, go ahead. So you be careful when driving, please. 
I want to no, introduce. I'm not driving actually. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to introduce now Joel Pollock. Hey Joel, are you around here? Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Javier. How are you? Um, just want to say thank you for everybody with all the hard work that's been put into this. Uh, I'm from Panther Coffee. I'm co-founder with my business partner and wife. He's based out of Miami. Uh, we are very excited about this project. And we've established a relationship with two farms near Sotata, and we've already secured the coffee for this year. Um, it's roughly around 40 bags, which we're really excited about. Uh, relationship, this is our third harvest with these guys. I've uh, been to the farm a few times. Uh, amazing coffee, amazing land, and it's an amazing project. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Joel. Yes, I agree. Israel and Astrid, that are the coffee producers in Cauca, uh, feel very close to you and are grateful for you buying the coffee. So thank you. Now I think we can continue with the committee. What do you think, Javier? I think we should, but still I will em emphasize that we want all you buyers to become a Joel, to get linked to the producers and to buy for many seasons in coffee. But then, uh, Willem, could you start with the committee? And if you put on the microphone, it would much better. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds a lot better, thank you. Um, I have the great honor to introduce also Gerardo Montenegro, who is the um, uh, executive director of the committee of Cauca and you have already met him in the video but now we see Gerardo live. Hola Gerardo, como vas? Que tal todo? Hola William, pues muy alegres, muy contentos de poder tener este encuentro nuevamente, así que muy buenos días, eh, muy buenas tardes, muy buenas noches a todas las personas en cualquier parte del mundo donde hoy están Quiero en nombre de las 90 mil familias de cafeteros Willen decirles gracias nuevamente por aceptar esta invitación a esta caravana virtual. Realmente estamos muy, pero muy contentos. Agradecerles también eh, a muchos de nuestros eh, compradores que ya han estado en Cauca. Veo muchas caras conocidas. Veo muchos de ellos que han estado en, en nuestras subastas anteriores. Y cómo han ido... Eh, you thank you very much and to all of you here who want to come and get to know our territory so once again i say that we are thanking you immensely so i'm gerardo montenegro i work for the federation of coffee for 23 years now and i want to share with you a little bit of how the coffee and coffee growing in the federation have given us the opportunity of being who we are so I am from a peasant humble, I come from a coffee family, I'm a coffee grower, I'm an agronomy engineer, and I've had this opportunity that the Federation and the coffee world has given me to be an extension of all of this. So this is a great job that the Federation is doing here, um, improving the profitability and the income, and here I can be able to see in how coffee changes the life and how coffee growing in the Federation is changing the life to the coffee grower in a very positive way and in the communities in the same way by giving a potential to their development. So we live from coffee, we are sons of coffee and this makes us extremely proud. So we we like to be with you since you are promoting us to be every time better. So from the committee we have been all the time concerned and trying to advance with new commercial pro per, uh, um, proposals. So here I want to introduce Milton Vidal. He's here with us as a coordinator of special coffees in the Department of Cauca. So Milton, go ahead. No se oye el micrófono de él. El micrófono de él está muy bajo. 
Milton, ¿te puedo pedir el favor de que te pegues el micrófono un poco más? No te estamos oyendo. Un poquito más, un poquito más. Uh, ¿Puedo repetir? Sí, yes, un poquito más. Cante, cante, doctor. Better. Perfecto. Adelante. I make to have you read I'm the coordinator here of special coffees. I come from uh, from the town of Sotana. I study agronomy in the Valle del Cauca and for 22 years I had been working or I work with the National Federation of Coffee of Colombia and I coordinate the program of special coffees and with this mission that I've had here for the welfare of the coffee producers we are working by generating added value for the coffee growers and through what through the implementation of different sustainable means so not that's why We have more than 30,000 farms where we have had uh, seals like Rainforest Airlines, uh, Organic Culture, for C, Task, for Nespresso, and uh, Practice Coffee for Starbucks. And now it's been, it's, it's great to mention here that these are sustainable seals. They generate here with the coffee growers in some occasions they don't compensate the effort of all the investments that they're doing here in the farms to get certified so that's the reason why we have made contests where the coffee producers become competitors with their best coffees and with those coffees they can be able to tell us their story about their son and they uh, they they make clients in love of us so that are willing to give us some very favorable prices here but that are also very favorable for your businesses So, so here with the Federation of Coffee, we have this committee, and this is a concern, the permanent concern about the quality. So that's why here we have the engineer, Pedro Girardo, coordinator of the area of quality of coffee in the Department of Cauca. Go ahead, Pedro Felipe. Uh, you're all welcome. Welcome to the Department of Cauca. Cauca. Cafetera. So I'm Pedro Felipe Girardo. I'm an agronomist engineer. I have been 30 years here for the service of the coffee producer. Since I was a child, I've had the love for the fields and, the, and farming. So that's why, with the help of my parents, I decided to study in a school with a um, agricultural vocation. So then. I could be able to be trained to be an engineer, agronomy engineer. So my work is basically based in orientating the coffee producer in the improvement, continuous improvement of quality. With the help of USAID and the National Federation of Coffee, I train myself as a tester of coffee and here I turn, learned how to get to know this wonderful world of coffee a lot better. So now we have seven labs, uh, educational labs, where we are training the uh, grower in the production of post coffees of high quality in my job. I have the satisfaction is to be able to see how we pay the effort to see how the coffee uh, grower is making to make differentiated coffee. So with this, we expect to have a great relationship with you and our coffee producers. Thank you very much. So Pedro, uh, you're welcome here to this uh, Department of Cauca territory. Of, uh, with the, the only risk that you have here is that is to that you feel in love with all of this so all of you thank you very much for helping us uh, construct coffee for peace you're all welcome thank you so much gerardo gracias, uh, it was gerardo. very nice uh, the, the stories from you milton and pedro felipe and, pedro and the excellent work that you do from the committee uh, i want to introduce Entonces, three other buyers uh, starting from ryan smith Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm with Novel Coffee Roasters in Dallas, Texas, a uh, family owned business here. Uh, I own it with my brother-in-law and uh, really excited to be here. Um, you know, when I opened my box of 44 roasted samples and green samples and uh, and the other goodies in there, I was just uh, thinking about the incredible amount of work that went into creating that experience for us all remotely. and. And it's really a luxury to be able to experience that um, from the safety of my own cupping table. And uh, it was great to taste everything and, and looking forward to, to learning more about the producers and just spending time with you guys. Great. 
Thank you, Ryan. Maria, can I just say something? Thank you, Ryan, for what you just mentioned, because that is part of the model that we're building, that you in your offers, in your house, you can receive samples, green and roasted, so that you can start to feel and taste the coffees that you're going to buy. Exactly. Thank you so much for your introduction. Now I want to invite Johannes. Maybe you can turn on your camera. No. Ah, uh, sorry. I, I think I'm not possible. It says uh, I have to close everything down, so I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Okay, but <laughs> we're hearing you perfectly, so you can talk. Okay. So, thank you very much for letting me join this event. It was until now really much fun. I really enjoyed the coffees. I loved them, uh, and I hope it goes on like that. Thank you. Thank Fantastic. You. Great. And now the last one I want to introduce, Reed Tedder. Hi there, everybody. Hey. Sorry, turn the lights on there. So I'm Reed. I am uh, an assistant roaster and coffee purveyor at True Coffee Roasters. And okay. I'm Jackson Sabalonis. Um, I'm also assistant roaster here at True Coffee Roasters in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, we're happy to be with all of you, and um, thanks for getting us together. Yeah. Thank you, Reed and Jackson. Very nice to meet you. Maria, I'm just Thank curious. Baron, we see you connected, uh, but we want to say hello to you. Are you available on your camera? Uh, Javier, I think Baron uh, sent me a message that he had to step out, so he might ha be connected, but not there right okay. now physically. So. Okay, thank no you. Problem. As, as so, let's problem. continue. So, uh, William, I think we're going to see another video before we go to the discussions of the coffees. I yeah. know that you are very excited to start uh, talking about these beautiful coffees that you were able to cup. Absolutely. So let, let's let's move over to the video. I really enjoyed the presentations by um, by Gerardo and Milton and Pedro. Some of the speeches were not translated, but we will catch up with that over the next days. And so let's go to the next video. Para mí es un orgullo, es un elogio, un elogio muy grande de que mi café lo estén degustando, tomando en otras naciones. Me siento muy orgullosa y muy agradecida. El café es un sacrificio muy grande para uno, pero cuando uno hace las cosas con amor, todo le sale bien. Les digo que lo que están tomando es algo que hemos hecho con mucho amor y estamos felices de que lo puedan disfrutar. Estamos produciendo el mejor café en el mundo para que lo, lo gusten y lo disfruten. Además, estamos protegiendo el medio ambiente, el suelo y, y el agua. Las personas que están disfrutando de mi café en el exterior, les quiero decir gracias. Gracias porque están dando la oportunidad a una familia que le pone vida, corazón, a producir un café de alta calidad. Desde que tengo uso de razón, Conozco de café. Mi familia ha sido cafetera, mis abuelos, tatarabuelos. Para mí, para mi familia, es el medio de sobrevivir. Con el café he sacado a mis hijas adelante, les he dado a un estudio bueno, que hoy son unos profesionales. Y yo les pediría que nos sigan apoyando, comprando nuestro café, porque hay muchos... En este municipio hay muchas personas caficultoras que sacan muy buena calidad de café y necesitamos de su apoyo, que nos sigan apoyando y nos sigan comprando el café que es de muy buena calidad. Todo esto que hemos hecho a lo largo de este tiempo eh, ha sido posible también por la paz que ya tenemos en la región. Sin eso habría sido bastante difícil hacerlo y por eso apostamos totalmente y definitivamente 
al proceso de paz. Somos gente echada para adelante, trabajadora. Nos dedicamos a la agricultura, ganadería, entre otras actividades. Y quiero seguir trabajando. Mi ilusión es seguir trabajando, que Dios me dé la oportunidad de tener la salud y poder aportar así un, un granito de arena para que se sienta bien, no solamente mi familia, sino eh, el resto de sociedad a quienes yo les pueda apoyar de alguna manera. Cuando cultivo café, cultivo sueños, cultivo esperanza. Para mis hijos y para mis nietos, tengo la ilusión de que ellos sigan viviendo en esta finca y sigan cultivando el café y les enseñen a los hijos a cultivar el café, que, que ellos son el futuro. able to see and wow. meet the coffee producers that produce the wonderful coffees that you were able to cup. I really liked one sentence that one coffee grower said, when we grow coffee, we grow hope and we grow dreams. So uh, we let me if you want, you can continue. But yes. I just, uh, William, just give me one second. I see that Tim Chaplain is being with us from the beginning. So please, uh, Tim, say hello to us. Hi, uh, how's everyone doing today? My name is Tim <laughs> Chaplain. I'm with Traboka in the United States. And um, uh, I have a long history of working with Willem and a whole bunch of different people on this call. Um, Back in the early 2000s, when we started to go looking for coffees, uh, Willem had one of the first projects in Honduras with food coffee. I believe Jeff Watts also joined on that. And uh, you can tell by the gray that we have in our beards that we've been around <laughs> coffee for a little bit. Um, there's a lot of people on this call that we worked with for a long time. So there's a lot of uh, expertise and experience. And I think that with the generous financial support of the USAID and the excellent technical support and the just incredibly professional people within the FNC, um, we think that this is one of the best programs out there. And this could be a new model for efficiently and effectively uh, augmenting or supplementing the relationships we build by traveling to origin But especially in this particular time, I think it's an incredible way to allow you to taste coffees, to get more information about where they're produced and who produces them. And our role really, the FNC and Traboka and Blue Coffee is to just be the most efficient, um, both financially and in terms of time and everything else to get you your coffee. Um, you know, this is, uh, an incredible opportunity and you'll see as we visit the different people how much it's appreciated that we're trying to buy coffee in a way that finds a level where it's a profitable and long-term sustainable venture for the producer and given the current conditions that we're all under in the world and especially uh, coffee buyers and coffee roasters um, our goal has been to create something where this year we can find something that's mutually beneficial for everyone that allows us to move you know our current situation is tough and eventually we're going to we're going to move out of this and our relationships and the quality of our relationships uh, and the financial integrity of our relationships in terms of everything being used in the proper way is going to be really important and i just appreciate everyone on this call i was looking through the list today and it's uh quite an amazing group of people from veterans to new people. And um, I'm really excited for the community we've created and I'm grateful to be a part of it. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much for 
for teaming up with this craft team, with the coffee team, program uh, team, and uh, nearly we're reaching to the point when we want to discuss about these coffees that you have already tasted. Now, I would like to tell the buyers or roasters that have not say hello to us that don't worry, you will have your chance. We will make sure that you are going to say hello to us. So, Maria, should we move on? Yes. As Javier was saying, this is the first day or of four days that we're going to be here. So, uh, I think you want to talk about the quality of the copies that you had the chance to cup this week. So, um, David from Boot Coffee and Juan Sebastian from the Craft Coffee team are going to lead the, the, this discussion around the coffees. Uh, so, I invite Willem if you want to say some words before or we start. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, David um, deserves extra applause because he's been the engine behind this caravan that is, has already been moving very swiftly. David, uh, your hard work is coming to a realization. I'd like to give you the floor so that you, the two of you can lead the cupping discussions. Excellent. <clears throat> can everyone hear me all right? Good. All right, thank you. Here, David. Excellent. Uh, thank you, everyone. This is uh, very exciting. As everybody's been saying, we've been working on this caravan for months, and this is really now uh, a reality. And, and I want to thank everyone for not only their, their input and their, their hard work, uh, from the organizations to uh, the program to USAID, and of course, to the buyers and roasters and many other observers we have watching us today. And let's uh, jump right in and, and start talking about coffees. And I just do want to say, my name is David Poole and I'm a consultant with the USAID Producers to Markets Alliance. Uh, and I, every day I will be along with uh, someone from uh, the Craft Coffees team just leading the discussion about the coffees. And unfortunately, we, are limited by time, so we won't be able to discuss uh, each coffee uh, in depth or give it the, uh, the justice it deserves, no doubt, for all of the, the hard work and effort that went into the coffee, but we'll do our best to uh, share some insights and some, uh, some, uh, some observations about uh, each of the coffees. So I'd like to just uh, turn it over to Juan to introduce himself before we uh, start looking at the coffees. Juan? Thank you, David. Um, before we start with the discussion, I want to say thank you again to all the buyers for being here with us, for your time helping these amazing coffees. I hope they all arrive well to your labs. Um, I hope you had have a really good, a great time uh, copying these, these coffees. As David said, uh, my name is Juan Sebastián Rivera, and I'm part of the craft coffee team. I'm a Q grader, and just uh, uh, for, for your knowledge, the craft coffee team is the team in charge in all the related with the specialty coffees with FNC. Uh, we find these amazing coffees in the in the origin in the departments, and we export all these amazing coffees. So let's start with the discussion of these nine. Amazing coffees. Wonderful. Um, I, I'd like to introduce guys. We're just going to go. Uh, we're just going to go back to uh, Pedro Felipe Giraldo from the Federation, just so I can give us. He he knows these coffees well, and many of these producers. Um, he's the one that works, uh, of course, in the quality, and just was talking to us a minute ago with, with the Comité. Is a very central person for uh, coffees in in Cauca. And I'll translate, I think I have to translate simultaneously, or maybe I don't, we might have that resolved now. Um, and so actually we might have that resolved. So I'll just let him give a few words about the coffees and then we'll uh, see the results kind of, we have everything ordered uh, in terms of score. Um, but let's uh, turn it over. Uh, uh, Pedro Felipe, no, no sé si quieres compartir algunas palabras. 
Los caficultores que participan en esta caravana virtual están ubicados en el centro y sur del departamento. Adelantan su caficultura en alturas que están comprendidas entre los 1.700 a 1.950 metros sobre el nivel del mar. Básicamente, manejan la variedad castillo. Algunos de ellos poseen variedades that had pre presented to the contest as Cons Colombia and Castillo. All of the coffee producers do <clears throat> a benefit by collecting only uh, mature beans in a fermentation of prolonged and controlled fermentation. So according to the elevation or altitude where they are located in the variety that they manage, they do the process of fermentation and the cherry between 18 to 22 hours and between 18 to 22 hours later after the unpulping. So then they are approached to the sun in a period of time between 15 and 10 days. So in this group of coffee producers, we have uh, Mr. Axel from the center of Cauca from the town of Cajibio who handles uh, this in his farm. So he does different pro protocols of benefits. So today, Mr. Absa is participating with a honey of the variety Geisha. Also with this, all the coffee producers have a vocation in coffee. They are involved since they were been little children in the process of coffee. And all of them are working with only one single objective, to produce coffees very high quality coffees. So we want to name Mr. Ramon Manzano from the south of Cauca, from the town of Sotaram, who from 12 years ago, he had been producing coffees, special coffees. And this is how in 2012, he occupied number two position in the, in the chair of excellence. So he, from there, he mentioned that the pathway that we have to follow is to, fo is to produce special coffees. Muchísimas gracias. For, muchísimas gracias por esos comentarios. Entonces, es muy bueno tener un trasfondo de los, de los agricultores. Yo quiero mencionar que la información que, y las fichas técnicas y de los agricultores en todos estos lotes que están disponibles en el sitio web de Coffee for Peace. Y hemos visto el portal y te hemos visto todas estas fichas técnicas en unos lotes individuales from the cuppings um, on that site, and we can share with you other ways too. Um, but let's go ahead and, and jump right in now to the, to the coffees, and uh, perhaps we can put up just the results, uh, Felipe, up on the screen so that we can see our top 10 uh, or the nine results. So let me actually see this. You can just see here the scores that we had, um, and we had, uh, the top scoring coffee was from Dario Manzano, and that was lot number two that scored. The average score was just over 85. Um, we, if there was a wide uh, spread, we would take out the top, the top score and uh, and the lowest score. Um, uh, let's take a look now at the second uh, second screen of results. There we go. This is a little better uh, view of, of how things scored. You can see the actual scores. So we were a pretty tight range when you look at the scores, but from 85 down to 83.48 uh, was the, the range. And then one other thing to also keep in mind that you can't see here uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll be able to show the graph, but just the spread on, on some of the coffees was, was tremendous. Um, other coffees were, were very tight. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but let me just introduce, and, and I think I'll start maybe with Emily uh, Bean. I, I don't know if you're uh, still available to talk, Emily. I can't see everybody. Yeah. Uh, great, but I just uh, would love to hear. You, you really liked uh, the coffee by Dario Manzano, and maybe you can just give a, a few comments and words about that, that coffee. I did, yeah. So um, I kind of went through and found, do you, do you want like tasting notes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, um, kind of from start to finish, it was a really nice coffee. It was getting like chocolate and like pomegranate um, or cherry uh, caramel on the nose, um, and then 
especially as it cooled, there was a really nice floral character, almost like a hibiscus that came out, which really stood out to me on this table. Although, I mean, I like everything on this table. Wonderful. That's great. Emily, thank you. Oh, there, and we got your name up too, right at the end. Yeah. The, that's the, the cool part. Um, and I'd also like to call in Jennifer um, Yates to, to give her comments. Jennifer, are you, are you there? Can you, can you make some comments about the coffee? Hi, yes, I am here. I was just trying to pull up my crop store and get into the group because this, oh. I, this, it already feels a long time ago, even though yeah. it was a long I'm ago. I'm sorry, and I, and I will try, you guys, just so you know, I'm going to try to let everybody know um, if I'm thinking about calling on you, so you'll have uh, some uh, some heads up. But also, if you can just have your notes open uh, yep, when we're doing I'm going to the open them up right now. Great. Thanks. Beautiful. But you're opening it now, so it's going to take you a minute, right? Well, we can come back to you. Um, can you show, uh, Felipe, can you show, I believe you have a, a diagram with sort of some of the tasting notes um, summarized in a, in a screenshot. Um, can we see that now while... Uh, Jennifer's getting her notes up. There you go. So this is uh, from Sotara. Um, some wonderful coffees from Sotara. Uh, Via Sophie is the name of the farm. Uh, and Dario Manzano is the, the producer. But you can see there were, there were some interesting... Um, Notes. Is this the one or is it, is it Dario Manzano Dos, I think. I don't know if you did a separate one for this. This may not be the right one because I see the mouth drying and I'm not so sure about that. But um, let's, let's, oh, this is it, the right, no, that was it. You were right, you were right. That was the right one. I saw the score. You can go back to it. Um, and Jennifer, whenever you're ready to talk, you can just jump right in and cut me off. Um, but some very, let me just say some very, si puedes cambiar Felipe a la otra pantalla, la otra Dario Manzano. There we go. Yeah, so grapefruit, black tea, brown sugar, caramel, malic acid, um, raisin, tropical fruit, a very clear orange citrus chocolate. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful coffee. Um, and, you know, Jennifer, we can come back to you. I think we're going to keep moving just for the, the sake of time. But let's just say that this was a beautiful coffee, a very good uh, representation of, of the coffees of Cauca and, and of Sotara in particular. Very nice um, experience for a lot of you, a uh, coffee that a lot of you enjoyed and probably a coffee that a lot of you would, would like to purchase. Um, so let's go on to, to coffee number two from Axel Vetten, I don't know how you say his name uh, precisely. I probably butchered that, but um, Felipe, if we can get the notes up for Axel Vetten. And I would like to call on Sarah Zeman. Sarah, I don't know if you're uh, coordinating efforts in the, the cafe right now or if you have a minute to just give us your I'm here so I can talk about it a little bit. Um, Do it. Yeah, this was this was definitely one of my favorites on the um I'm looking at my notes. I have my cell phone over here and my notes over here. So Perfect. fresh berries, I got a lot of fresh berries, natural fermentation possibly, like just a different it's just a different coffee on the table, which is representative of a lot of like the things that we look for. Um it looks like a great fun cup to explore is what I wrote. Just complex nose and a complex drink. So this is a really a good cup. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah, for that. This coffee was pretty controversial. It had a wide spread. So some people really liked it um, and other people uh, were a little more critical of it. So this is one of the coffees that, that demonstrated a real range of scores. But Scott Peterson uh, from True Coffee, you also really like this coffee. Um, what can you tell us about it? Hello. Let's see. I'm here. Oh. Um, no, I, I thought, you know, they had, had a lot of, lot of ni nice depth. They got, a, you know, a lot of citrus, blood orange, um, grapefruit out of it. Um, just, you know, I, I you know, I, I just, I, I thought it was a, a nice, you know, 
change or a different take on a, on a very nice coffee. So wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Scott, for those those comments. Um, we'll keep moving along here to coffee number three. Uh, this is Dario Manzano number one. So that would be the other one. There you go. Exactly. Another coffee from Sotara. And um, I think I'd like to call on Jeff uh, Watts. I really, really like this coffee a lot. Um, gave it a great score, and your notes were very uh, poetic. Uh, maybe you can just give us a little uh, taste of how you felt about this coffee. Uh, yeah, David. I, I love the coffee. It was, it was uh, one of my favorites on the in this group, I, I think orange was the the note that stood out a lot to me. It got a lot of orange, uh, a lot of different citrus tastes, really, a bright, tart citrus, uh, including grapefruit and including lime and orange. But uh, the, the orange and the, the sweetness of it, the honey sugarcane sweetness, I thought was really compelling. Uh, so it was a, it was a vibrant, uh, very, very, and you see in electric coffee. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jeff, for the uh, um, I'm getting some feedback. Maybe, Sarah, maybe I'm hearing Mill Cross here in the background. I don't know if we can mute your microphone, Sarah. Thank yeah. you. Excellent. Um, and Ryan, uh, Ryan Smith, uh, coffee roast. you also really like this coffee. Um, Maybe you can just give us a couple of comments on, on your, your future. Sure, yeah, this is my highest scoring copy from, from this group, uh, from this session one. And uh, I thought both of the Dario Manzano lots had uh, a lot of sweetness, really clear and clean acidity and uh, almost kind of like tropical citrus. Um, but I thought lot one had a little bit more controlled acidity and a little bit better balance than lot two for me. So even though the group scored two higher, I personally uh, enjoyed lot number one a little bit more. Um, Casey notes, I had pineapple, strawberry, and just a really kind of satisfying cup. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Okay. Um, and and uh, let's... Uh, um, you know, I wanted to ask, uh, I don't know, Tim or Sean from Traboka, you guys also cup these coffees. I'm not sure if you're ready, but I'd love to hear what you guys think about either of the Dario Manzano coffees. Seems like this is a producer that the folks are really drawn to. Um, hey, David, yeah. do, you, do you want me? It, you go, go ahead. Go ahead. Either one of you no, guys. You I'm putting you on the spot here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Tim and I both like them uh, about equally. Um, I I think I scored them a quarter point more. I felt like they're a little bit more refined, um, a little bit sweeter than the other ones on the table. Because um, I actually cup these in, in in different tables at different times. So I. I tend to like the actually this uh, as opposed to Ryan. I, I I actually like the second lot just slightly more than the first lot. So and it's but it's one of the coffees that Tim and I agree on, and uh, we seldom agree on coffees. You seldom agree. You seldom agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. Conflict is the best thing at the cupping table to force you to decide what you like. So we we do that in spades. Marissa already like also liked both of these coffees as well, and uh, she had participated in the previous uh, in the uh, in the trip in February, and so we had kind of a universal positive notes on these coffees across the board. So that typically when the three of us cup a coffee, and I think Charlie liked it too, he had cupped it separately. Um, that ends up indicating that it's a pretty strong performer across the board. I did have a lot of similar notes to um, to Emily as well in terms of the finish and the delicateness of this. The, the when a coffee has that longevity, where as it cools down, you like it as much or more, um, that usually indicates something that um, you know it's, it's something special about the structure of the coffee or different things. So we really we really like this one. Great, thank you guys very much. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Juan to introduce some of the other coffees and some of the other buyers. Juan, take it away. 
Thank you, David. Uh, let's continue with the uh, sample number four, that is from Armando Fernandez. Uh, I would like to invite uh, again to Jeff Watts. Uh, Jeff, if you want to share with us your comments, uh, so please. Yeah, sure. Uh, this was another of my, my favorite coffees of the group. Um, this one in particular stood out to me for a, a more of an apple taste, a malic acid uh, kind of taste. It reminded me of green apple. I also had some some notes of, of persimmon and uh, lemon and apricot as well, uh, but it was a a coffee that was a little bit less overtly sweet than the, the Dario Manzano coffees, but it was, um, you know, it, extremely flavorful and had a, a character that was uh, different than the rest of the coffees on in the set. Okay, thank you. I really agree with you. That was one of my favorite uh, coffees. It's a really characteristic coffee from the Cauca region. A uh, lot of fruits like uh, apple, uh, a little bit of berries, um, maybe a little bit of freshness. And I, I saw in the in the comments of most of the of you the buyers, uh, you put uh, astringency, but is I think it's because all these coffees are really really fresh. So so take that in in mind, and let's continue with the coffee with the sample number five that is from Aura Silva. Um, I don't know if we have here uh, Edmund Kung from Moving Coffee Roastery and if Edmund would like to share with us the comments. Can you, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, I remember the coffee was super, super sweet. Like, like I imagine it, it didn't feel didn't feel like a Colombian coffee. It was super sweet, somewhat like a like a natural Ethiopian, but I know it wasn't. But it was super sweet. It tastes like juice, uh, and then the sweet chocolate undertone just keep keep coming up. And I just really enjoy that coffee when I cupped it and I almost had the whole thing. Thank you, thank you so much. And I saw Scott. Anderson has a, a, a good score for that copy. Uh, I don't know, Scott, if, if, if you want to talk about it. I think uh, it could be Scott, but I also think Ryan, uh, Ryan Smith um, had a- Oh, Ryan, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ryan from Nobel Copy. Sure. So this is the Or Silva. Um, yeah. So this is the very of all the forty-four coffees. This is the very first coffee that that I uh, put through the coffee grinder and um, and uh, made me feel optimistic about this uh, cupping because it was had a really sweet dry aroma. So I was excited to taste it. Um, yeah, I thought it was just a really nice, balanced and clean coffee. Um, I got notes of pear and apple. Um, so yeah, really solid. Thank you so much, Ryan. So let's move to the next sample. That is our first blend. That is called Meseta blend. And I don't know, Brandon Riggs uh, from Rising Star. Uh, if you want to share with us your comments. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we thought this coffee was one of the most nicely balanced on the table that we found. Um, it had classic caramel, chocolate, really sweet notes to it. Uh, both Toby and I really liked the body, the mouthfeel on this. Uh, Toby wrote down glassy. To me, it was very creamy. Um, and I think one of the other best things about this coffee is it was nicely balanced between that really nice, bright acidity and the creamier body and it uh, led nicely into the aftertaste. So to us, this was a really uh, kind of wrote, I think, classic Columbia yeah. coffee. But it's one that I think if I, if I had it on a table against a bunch of other regions, 
I could just taste them and go, oh yeah, that's that's from Colombia. And uh, yeah, so it was it was really nice. Thank you so much. Yes, and this coffee for being a, a, a blend. This is a blend for from three different coffee growers from the region of Bio. I think it's a really good blend. It has a really good balance and is really characteristic of the of the of the region. So David, I don't know if you want to continue with the next sample. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so our next sample is from Uvarnelia Delgado. Uvarnelia Delgado um, uh, and said some very interesting comments, I think, from, again, and Jeff from Jeff Watch. Jeff, uh, tell, tell us how you felt about this coffee. Yeah, th this coffee um, did, did well for me when I cupped it the first time. I, I see notes of sugar cane. Um, and lemon, I think it, it stood out, not for any one particular trait, but just for being balanced. Uh, but I tasted it again this morning, and um, and I liked it even more. That it got some, got even sweeter, some orange and melon, and confectioner sugar. Uh, so I, it was kind of an understated coffee, but but uh, very pretty. Wonderful, great. That's so good to hear. And nice to hear that people are continuing to taste these these coffees. Um, that's really great and a good way to refresh uh, and to double check, I think, initial impressions. Very cool. Jeff, um, Emily, uh, let's turn it back over to you. I believe this is also a coffee that you really enjoyed. I did, yeah. So this was one that really struck me as a fairly classic Colombian flavor profile. Um, really nice kind of understated chocolate notes, a pretty delicate caramel or, I mean, sugar cane, as has been said. Um, really good sweetness, some mild nuttiness, not a whole lot of like really dominant fruit flavors, um, as I recall, but yeah. Wonderful, yeah, that's great. Thank you for your, uh, for your comments. This is a, a nice coffee as well, and evidently one that gets better with a few days of, uh, of age. Um, a few days of rest, maybe, is a better way to put it. Um, let's turn now to Juan. Go ahead uh, with the next coffee. Okay, the next coffee is from uh, Ramon Manzano. Ramon Manzano. Uh, I would like to say something about Ramon. Ramon occupied the second place in the Cup of Excellence in 2012, and since then he has produced has produced specialty coffees every year. So, so we are really happy to, to work with Ramon. And I want to hear uh, Sara Redes, uh, if Sara could share with us your comments, and uh, maybe next year we will be together to, to, to share personally. I hope so, Juan. It's so good to see you online. <laughs> Hola. Juan, <laughs> face. Hola, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> Bueno, well, I, I actually really like this one. I got a lot of floral notes on this. Um, a really balanced, long finish. Uh, great, easy drink for pour overs. Very tea-like. That's what I got on my notes. Um, overall, the acidity really stood out for me. The body stood out for me. Uh, great, great balance. Um, and just the flavors again, tea-like, floral. Uh, yeah, a great pour. Okay, thank you, Sara. And uh, uh, let's go to the final sample. Is the Meseta blend, the second blend for these nine samples. And I, I want to hear uh, from Sean or maybe Tim from Traboka if you want to say something about the sample. I John? jumped in, so I guess I'll talk here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so compared to the other blend, I liked uh, the first one more than the second one. So they scored about uh, a point difference here. Um, I had some fruit, um, a lot of caramel, nut, chocolate, sweet, balanced. Um, it was a little fresh, 
I felt like a lot of these were kind of on the fresher side. So maybe the, the acidity is a little more intense than, than what we're used to. Um, and I think that's part of timing as well. So uh, yeah, pretty solid, especially for a blend. Thank you, Sean. And I think, thank you, you all guys for, for the discussion. I don't know if David has well, some words. No, I just wanted to, uh, Carla, we all said Carla on this, um, on this last one. I know we got to keep moving, but Carla, did you, are you still there? And did you have any, anything you'd like to share about this, this blend? I believe you had a relatively high score for it. Um, yes. Let me see. Um, blend two. Blend two, the Meseta blend two. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I have, um, Apple and um, a little peach. Uh, I think there's a softness to the acidity that just uh, kind of translates to peach uh, for me. Um, and uh, there was a little bit of sparkly acidity uh, that comes from an apple uh, reminiscent for me. Uh, uh, Red Bay leans a lot into the ch anything that leans chocolate uh, is uh, right up our alley. So I think that's uh, something that really stood out for me. Um, I got a little grainy with that. I think my uh, revert back to being fresh. Um, so while though grainy in a sweet way, not in any like um, dry or stale by any means. Um, so rather sweet barley fish, um, but please. Great. Hey, Carla, thank you very much for that. And you know, I, this has been a nice discussion. Again, we're uh, under time pressure and we're a little over and I've, I've been the one for the past number of months saying we've got to keep things on schedule, but I really want to give people time and, and we'll get to everybody in the next few days. Tim Volkema, just real quick, my friend, I know you got all of these. We didn't, didn't ask you for any specific comments, but Tim, any anything from you or Frankie generally or Cody about the, this table of coffee if you'd like to share? Yeah, we cupped all four sessions together. And on, <clears throat> on this one, the, uh, the Mercedes Land 2 um, was one that we were interested in, um, not only because of, of how much quantity uh, was there, Honestly, but just it, it was just a great. Um, it, it was just a, it was a nice, nicely balanced uh, coffee. I think I, not, I don't know that I have a lot to add to the conversation that's been had about it. But I also noticed a little bit of um, cucumber. Um, you know, the classic little milk chocolate notes tasted very juicy, and uh, was just very in general. I think that was one of the one of the challenges we were talking about as we cupped all the samples was there's just so much quality and so, so to sometimes you have tables where you've got coffees and um and the quality across the board i thought uh really in all four sessions was was quite remarkable wonderful hey tim thank you very much um juan sebastian thank you for helping us moderate this um uh, Pedro Felipe, thank you for giving us some context for these wonderful coffees. Comité del Cauca, thank you very much for supplying these wonderful coffees uh, to our group on our first day of the Buyer's Caravan. I'd like to hand it back over to Willem and Maria Olano um, to close out uh, today's session. Thank you. Hey, David. Thank you for your great discussion. And um, Maria, what, what is your impression so far? It looks like the coffees are good. They're working out. And the coffees are the great. Covers, the uh, conversation went very, very well. Yeah. I'm, I'm super happy for the day of today. Yeah, so, so am I. And before I'm going to give it back to you, I just want to, again, thank everyone. I have already mentioned many names um, before we started the show. Uh, I, I specifically always want to thank those that do the hard and diligent work that re that is necessary. Uh, and again, uh, Marcus for Marcus Young for doing an amazing job roasting the coffees. I've been asked about you know what kind of profiles were used. We are happy to share those. Um, I want to to thank Javier also for his relentless, unstoppable energy in helping us to put this all together. 
I want to thank you, Maria. Um, and, and one big thanks to those we did not really mention yet in the thank you is that to the farmers, because the farmers, they believed in this cause and is in this possibility. And what is important to mention is that the buyers who, of whom you have heard some of them speak about the coffee profiles, uh, they and Taroboka are uh, negotiating, doing business to purchase coffees. And that is an offline type of um, activity, but it's very important and it helps us sustain these types of uh, innovative um, shows like the uh, Virtual Buyers Caravan. So thank you, thank you all. And Maria, I'm going to allow you to um, go over the program for tomorrow. Exactly. Thank you, Willem. It has been a great morning uh, talking about quality, talking about the producers and you, the buyers. Important to tell you again that the coffee producers have been seeing this live with a constant uh, translation to Spanish so they can get all the ideas that we are discussing here. Um, before, uh, Javier, do you want to add something? Yes, thank you. Well, again, Just me. Uh, for In all Colombia. the buyers, and uh, of course, later maybe we can talk about the producers. But here, we are trying to build a methodology or a model or a channel, however you want to, want to call it, uh, that it is useful for, for you that being receiving the samples, tasting the samples, having these, these discussions, is this useful in the sense is saving you time, having a proper uh, interchange of concepts, because this is, is something that we want to repeat as many times in the year as if there is crops. But uh, any comment, any suggestion that you can give us after we finish today or the days afterwards, please do that. Because what we are trying to do is to build something for you and producers to get together to taste coffees and trade coffee so that the producer will get a, let's say, a, a, a better price because he is giving you a good product. But for you, it's important that you can collect and select, uh, uh, improve your portfolio of, of coffees to, see, to sell to your clients. So tomorrow, we have another session. And like I said, you, we still can listen to suggestions in order to get deeper into the, the, this methodology or the analysis of the, of the coffees. Because I was just talking with Maria yes. before, and I think that the coffees are the, the thing or the reason why we are here today to discuss. So let's talk about them. Let's try to send some messages to the producers in order to have a better coffee. So thank you for being here today with us. And now it's time for you to go to bed in some places. <laughs> And tomorrow morning, we will be back with you. So tomorrow, uh, we're going to have a very, very nice day talking about the coffees from Senko Eco Organization. So the idea is we're going to meet here at 10 in the morning, uh, the local time in, in Bogota, or 8 in the morning L in Los Angeles. Talking about Senko Eco coffees, please review your notes because tomorrow you're going to talk a lot about the coffees as well and I know tomorrow we're gonna have very very nice coffees to be discussed so once again thank you for being here it's very very nice to talk to you and the producers to be part of this conversation uh, my name is Maria I'm part of the craft coffee team I'm in the website group where you are uh, so any question you have, feel free to reach me or the rest of the team, Juan Sebastián, Juan Andrés, Bauter, or me, uh, to have, if you have any question regarding the coffees, logistics, uh, fun, drinks, party, anything. <laughs> have a great day. Thank you, Maria. Have a great day. Bye, <laughs> <laughs>